welcome again to the official Cyblogs podcast, Galore Tosp, and I am back again for yet another week. I'm Elf. I'm Amy. And we are here to try something a little different this week. We are. We had a bit of a confab and we decided maybe we'll try a couple of different uh, sort of formats for the podcast over the next couple of weeks. Do bear with us when we uh, find something new and exciting. The first and most exciting thing you'll notice is that we've got rid of a high-pitched hum which was bugging us for some while. (laughs) And quite hilariously, it turns out that a lot of that is just by unplugging the laptop. From the power, yeah. The more you know... That's that's embarrassing. Um, but but so that's good. <laughs> but but moving along. Uh, so Elf, how well? Firstly, how was your trip? Everybody um, wants to know. Oh, it was gorgeous and fantastic and warm and all things it needed to be. But it did lack in science. However, I did manage to catch up on a couple of wonderful podcasts that I'm following, especially Tosp. Fantastic. Cool, man. Well, welcome back. We're, we're happy to have you back. Um, so what are we going to be talking about this week? How are we changing things? Well, as um, some of our listeners may be aware, uh, trying to absorb a great deal of news information over a very short period of time is tricky. So that's why most science podcasts do nice, long, chatty, explainy things, because it makes it a lot easier to put facts onto a kind of kind of framework, I guess, and put them together. Mm. It facilitates learning, it as does. one of our side bloggers would say. It does. <laughs> So what are we going to do this week, Amy? What are we going to talk about and how are we going to fix it? Well, we're going to be uh, a little brave this week. Um, We've got the elections. I'm sure certainly many of our New Zealand uh, listeners hopefully know that (laughs) we have the general elections coming up in... Two weeks? Less than two weeks now. Mm. 26th of November? 29th. That's embarrassing. I should know that. Anyway, end of November... um, and, and of course, we do hope that you are all enrolled to vote and that you are voting because it's an important part of the democratic process. Um, now, during the last week or a week or two, um, the Science Media Center has been very good about going out to uh, the three main parties, being National Labor and the Greens, and also ACT as a minor but, but pretty important or, or influential, at least, party, um, and asking them about science policies. And so today we are going to be commenting on those a little bit, as well as the news of the Advanced Technology Institute, which it looks like uh, may get set up. Um, And what a couple of the bloggers have also written about these science policies. Now, it is disclaimer time. Mm -hmm. Um, It is indeed. We would like to make very clear that anything we say here is not representative of anybody else's opinion or official position or unofficial position or anything of that sort um, other than our own. So no one with whom we are associated, hang out, work for, anything like that. We are not re- representing what they say. Um, we're also not experts in some of these matters, so we will try not to mouth off too much. But, yes. <laughs> and with that in mind, we will try and keep it fair. We will report on the science for and against um, anything any of the individual parties might actually say, yeah. um, rather than putting our own political affiliations before anything like that, because that's how science should work. That said, that's what we're trying to do. It's kind of up to you guys to decide whether we achieve it or not, but it is through no malice of our own um, if we screw up. (laughs) We're not trying to tell you who to vote for. We'd like to make that very clear. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you definitely should not ask me who to vote for. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we've just discovered that Elf is remarkably unpolitical, which is quite funny. Um, Okay, so I guess we'll we'll dive straight in then, um, and I'll I'll let uh, Elf, I think I'll let Elf introduce us. So. Right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, very quickly the 10 questions that Science Media Centre put to uh, the three major parties and ACT as well. Now we don't have time to go through them all in detail, so, in detail, so we've picked our three favourites, our three big ones, which we think are really important for everyone to know a bit about before the election. So these three are the science priorities of the various parties, the, pol- uh, the party's policies around energy, energy generation, energy usage, and the policies around science and energy. Education. Now, Science Media Centre also asked all the individual parties about what they thought about CRIs, biosecurity, research and development, water quality, health and marine sustainability, and genetic engineering. Um, for more information on all of this, we refer you to the wonderful Science Media Centre's uh, Q&A session that they had, and also some policy documents that are coming out within the next week. We'll link to those um, on the TOSP blog, which is cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP. And also we'll be mentioning a couple of the cybloggers who have dove in, uh, right in 
Yes, correct. That, that's the correct <laughs> phrasing. Um, and have actually blogged about their own take on any of this uh, at the moment. And they're both very well researched and very, very well written. One is by Peter Griffin. Mm -hmm. um, of the Science Media Centre and kind of and cyblogs yes, and stuff. kind of everything yeah. and the other is uh, Alison Campbell I believe yes of Bioblog and uh, Alison writes on science and biology and educational uh, issues as well but we'll get to that um, later so first up number one the question was the Ministry of Science and Innovation has said it plans to develop a statement of science priorities for the government by November 30 and a statement of innovation priorities next March what do you think should be the key statements around science and innovation made by these documents so going through in no particular order other than alphabetical um, ACT came back and said that the government should be looking to create an environment conducive to good science rather than doing science itself and also they'd like to see maximum contestability for funding without um, throughout different research institutions uh, that includes CRIs or universities. Right. Uh, what we'll do is where we do have comments, we'll do them at the end of each question yep. as opposed to after each statement, just so everyone's clear on that. Uh, the Green Party, um, and the Green Party I'm sure many of us know often looks at sustainability and, and has that as a core linchpin of all its policies. So the Green Party said that they believe that uh, as a society we need to commit resources to both fundamental and applied research um, and that all such research should aim to contribute to sustainable development. So research priorities should um, lead to a greater understanding of the interconnections within the ecosystems on which we depend and which are around us, uh, as well as the causes of social problems. Um, and they also talk about uh, shifting um, to sustainable forms of production rather than focusing on generating profit in the present, uh, the short term, that sort of thing. So it's all about new uh, innovation, new industries, ecology, sustainability. Um, as they say, this is part of our commitment to localization and community economic development. Labor's uh, science policy documents haven't actually been released yet. They are due out within the next week or so, but they summarise their take on it by saying that uh, New Zealand should be uh, striving for a clean, green and clever future that leverages on the talents of its people to produce a productive and innovative economy. So they go further into it by saying they're going to do that by priority prioritising um, business expenditure on research and development because of the big lag compared to other OECD countries. Um, they're also trying to upskill more Kiwis, so keep Kiwis educated so that they can keep pace with competing technologies and benefit from the technologies that already exist. So there's uh, education stuff in, in there as well. They want to excite and educate science students. And the, the big push there is that they want a clean green brand. So they want to create an economy and they want to create jobs without any adverse effects on the environment. Mm. Um. And then National says that they are committed to boosting science and driving innovation in the New Zealand economy to underpin, underpin growth and create higher paid jobs. So they've said that their science priorities would be in areas that enhance economic bro in economic growth, I'm sorry. So they are focusing on uh, science and research resources squarely on growing the economy. That is the big thing for National. It's a uh, yeah, growing economy, bigger, more money for everybody, all of that sort of thing. Um, they also say other key priorities include harnessing science to improve our environment, provide more efficient energy and lift the performance of our health system. So what's your kind of take on this, Amy? Well, one thing that stood out for me, and I'm going to try where possible not to name party names, <laughs> um, but, but one thing is, is that based on the New Zealand and overseas scientists with whom I've worked, sorry, I just hit the microphone, uh, and with whom I've talked, and, and you know, all the reading and the blogs and stuff that we see, um, a more contestable funding system does not seem to be the answer. Um, what I hear already from people is that they spend so much time trying to find funding, trying to, you know, write the grants, uh, grants apply for the grants, not get the grants, start all over again, that they don't have much time to do the science itself. So I worry that more contestability means even more time spent filling out paperwork as opposed to doing science. I've also heard it makes people uh, less likely to work between silos mm. because everyone's trying to go for money. But Alf, what's, what's your experience it, with that? No, that, I, I have to agree with you. It doesn't promote working uh, together. And one of the big things that comes up again and again is this issue of IP, of the freedom of sharing ideas. Mm. And if you look to somewhere like MIT, uh, they have very, very liberal, uh, they, they have an associated 
business cluster to grow businesses from the research that they do. But the, the, um, the, the crucial idea behind that is that at the science level, they're very, very hands-off and very, very free with the sharing of their ideas and IP. And I don't think a, a highly contestable system promotes those interconnections that we really, really need for innovation. Um, the other, the other big thing that all the parties know is that they all want to grow the economy but of course no one's going to say that they don't want to grow the economy and no. I guess what differentiates the parties from then on is their own personal beliefs on uh, how is best to do that, what importance it takes and what they're willing to give up in order mm. to do that. Absolutely, and very interesting. It is it is pleasing to see though that there is a, a focus on research and development on innovation. We, we're we're aware of the fact that innovation, particularly, are, uh, is a buzzword. Uh, it is the favourite word of the moment, but for for very valid reasons. Um, and we will say more on that when we come back we to will. the high value manufacturing review at the end of this cast. Absolutely.